Good morning, P6. Um, we are going to do the constructing shapes uh, in chapter five of our book today. Um, teacher Nam is holding the camera, so say hello to Teacher Nam. And um, let's get right into it. So, question one construct a square ABC with sides 6.5 centimeters. So, constructing squares and triangles is pretty straightforward, as we know. For measuring the sides, you just need a ruler. And for measuring the right angle, you can either use a protractor, you could also use a compass if you'd like, or even just a set square can help you with that. Um, embarrassingly, I had to buy this new set today, but the entire thing only cost about 10 baht, so that's uh, not a big difficulty. As usual, when we're starting our shapes, let's start in the middle and low down in case our values are quite large. These ones aren't. Um, for this lesson, what I'll do is I will go through it with you step by step and you guys can follow along at home. And uh, if you need extra time after I've finished one of the shapes, just pause the video or rewind the video. Um, and we'll practice them this week, and then next week I will give you uh, new ones. Uh, sorry, next week, next lesson. Sorry, I'll give you new ones that you can do without help. But you can always re uh, refer back to this YouTube video. So to start off with, let's draw our six point five oops centimeter line. Oops, with a nice propelling pencil. So we've let's call these A and B. Obviously, as it's a uh, square, it doesn't matter who goes where, because all the sides will be the same. Now I've got to get my 90 degrees here, so either you can try using your set square. The only thing I don't like about the set squares is it's a little bit difficult to see when you are actually at a right angle. So I am going to use my protractor here and just put a dot at the 90 degree point up here, and then I'm going to measure 6.5 from point B, passing through there, and then I'm going to draw on a little 90 degree thing there, 6.5 centimeters, and this is going to be point C, and then again, we can just use our protractor to make sure we're working, oops, that's, sorry, that was a little bit off. Um, I'll remind myself to pass under the point there. And we just go another 6.5. So you guys can be following along with this in your book. If you don't have your book, don't worry. Oops. Uh, I will post an image of this on the line group and you can follow along on paper. I should probably have said that at the beginning of the lesson. And then point D. And we can go, oh dear, hmm, now why is point D not 6.5 centimeters away? That's a bit annoying, isn't it? Let's see what went wrong. So point D is definitely 6.5 and point D is here. How long is this line? This line is also about, hmm, about 6.5. Perhaps my protractor was a little bit off when I was using that. So I'm just going to ignore the line that I used the protractor for and just join these up. The cool beans. Okay, uh, and obviously you could also just do little dashes here to show all these lines are the same. Okay, next, constructing a rectangle. Um, much the same as the square. I'll let you do that yourselves. Again, you're just using the base and then height matching them up similarly to how you did the square. Okay, let's press on, shall we? So feel free to pause the video if you, uh, <laughs> if you're, well, you have to pause the video now to do this one. When you're ready, unpause the video and we'll go on to number three. Okay, so number three is a parallelogram. So we're going to, we're looking at a shape that's going to have two parallel lines that will be met by two other parallel lines. 
In this case, we've got KLMN. KL is nine centimeters. LM, so KL, LM is going to be 7.5 centimeters and KLM will be 72 degrees. So given that we know that KLM is going to be an acute angle, let's maybe start a little bit further over on the page. <clears throat> and let's begin with KL. So I'm just gonna measure my nine centimeter bus here. Um, K L, cool. Now I've got to measure our seventy-two degrees. So we just stick. Oh dear, stick in our protractor. Measure seventy-two degrees. Bit difficult on these books. If you do just want to do this on blank paper and stick it in later, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to measure our. What is it? Seven point five. So. 7.5. We could use little ghost lines here, but it's a relatively straightforward line we're going to draw. So I'm just going to go straight to... Um... Oh, now, <laughs> double check you've got it lined up properly. I wasn't lined up properly there at all. Measure twice, draw once is what you should be aiming for. So, I've got 72 degrees here. Now, we're going to have to draw a parallel line up here. So, one way we can do that is we can, we know that this is 72 degrees, so the angle, oh, hang on, I should mark my points while I'm here. So that was KL and this is M. Let's put in our 72 degrees. Let's put in our 9 centimeters and our 7.5 centimeters. Okay, so we know this is 72 centimeters. So what angle will be here between L, M, N? Yes, you're quite right. <laughs> it will be, they will have to add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 72 is 108. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, from here, measure 108 degrees. Now, try and line up perfectly. 100 and, oh, sorry, nudged it. 106, 78. Okay. And then we know how long this side is supposed to be, nine centimeters. So I can just draw in my nine centimeter line. I'm just gonna to switch to a slightly smaller ruler. Um, the small ruler plus set square plus protractor was a grand total of five bat. <laughs> and the long ruler was also five bat. So geometry is not a particularly expensive art. Put my points, my lines, cool. And just for the sake of it, let's write in that these are equal. And they're also parallel, aren't they? And then simply join up your points here. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm gonna put in my 108, given that that was one of our main uh, guides. Then I'm just going to double check that these are roughly correct. So is this 108? That is maybe closer to 109, but that's not bad. And is this 72? Uh, 72 and a half, maybe? 72, 71, maybe? But close enough. Cool. So then we've got our lovely parallel parallelogram, where we've got two parallel lines joined by two additional parallel lines. Cool. Now we're moving down to probably the most difficult um, shape we've got here today. This one is a trapezium. So a trapezium has a base that's, well usually, base that's longer than the top and it's going to have two different angles here. Okay. So 
Let's start, as usual, with our base of eight centimeters. Let's just keep using the small one because it's a little bit easier to control on the um, with the bend of this paper. That's going to be point PQ. Q? Yeah, PQ. Oh, sorry. Do pause and finish this before you start this one. Um, there we are. So P and Q are eight centimeters apart. Let's move on to the next bit of information in our. Uh, so question four, construct a trapezium PQRS such that PQ equal eight centimeters, angle QPS equals 44 degrees. PQR, over here, PQR is going to be 73 degrees and the height of the trapezium is 5.5 centimeters. And we'll get back to that height later because that's going to be a little bit more complicated than um, these other ones. So let's draw ourselves a guiding line um, over on this side, which was going to be 44. So let's line it up. 44 is going to be about here. Okay. So let's draw ourselves a nice guiding line or a ghost line over here. So just very lightly, very gently, gently, gently. Okay. Next, uh, and let me just put in this is 44 degrees. Next, we want to put in PQR, which is going to be 73 degrees. So still an acute angle, but a far less steep one. Oh gosh, it is difficult pushing down your protractor enough for it to get in here. Okay, 72. And again, let's do a lovely ghost line. Ooh, ghosts. Oops. <laughs> okay, let's try that ghost line again and actually go all the way to point Q. Teacher Dave. Ooh, there we are. Okay, it doesn't really change. So, this is not supposed to be lovely if they turned the bells off. Uh, this is not supposed to be a triangle, remember. This is a trapezium. And a trapezium has another side on the top. And that side will also be parallel to this line here. P and Q. So PQ will be parallel to RS. What we need to use is our height. So we know the height of the trapezium is 5.5 degrees. So let's see where on this line 5.5 degrees from the base is. So essentially let's form a triangle. So for this one I'm going to use a set square. If you'd like, you can use your protractor to find 90 degrees. The only issue is you kind of, you're doing both at once. So I think that's, this is one of the benefits of a set square. So let's use our set square to find 5.5 centimeters. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that's very narrow, isn't it? So let's, and this, again, this is a ghost line we're finding because we're trying to find the point here. So I'm just going to do a real line there and then 5.5 meets um, line SQ here let's put a point on there oops about there-ish and then <laughs> we can join these two points up <laughs> so this looks a bit daft, I know. Let's just maybe do these slightly stronger. So this up here is going to be PQR, I believe. Uh, yes, PQR. So this one's R and this one's S. Oops, that's a number eight, not an S. S and then SP is down here. Let's draw in our 72 degrees. Cool. 
and this is our trapezium. It's a bit of a strange looking trapezium, isn't it? It's almost a triangle because the line um, PS at the angle SPQ or PQS with the 44 degrees, that's, um, that's quite a steep slope here, isn't it? Yes, yes. Cool. Okay, so that's that trapezium done. So when you're doing a trapezium, pop your base in. If you've got the two angles, we can use the two angles. Easy as pie. <laughs> Last, we've got a rhombus. Now, let's read this one together. Construct a rhombus, E, F, G, H, with diagonals E, G, which equal 8.5, and F, H, which are 6 centimetres. So, the important thing here is diagonals. When we're talking about the diagonals of a rhombus, that's like if you imagine a kite. If you've got your diamond kite shape. The diagonals are the cross section, essentially. Yeah? So if you had a real kite, you would have sticks that, <laughs> that keep the kite together. And these are the measurements that we've got. So, if you think about E and G, that's 8.5 centimetres across here, and F, H will be 6 centimetres down there. So, let's start with E, G, shall we? Now, you might see very faintly on the paper, I've already done this one, I, <laughs> I forgot to do it on scrap paper and did it in the book instead. So, let's start here to 8.5. Point E and point G. So, so far it's quite straightforward. Next is where it starts to get a bit more complicated because in a rhombus the second line has to first of all cross perpendicularly and second it has to cross at exactly the halfway point. So what's the halfway point between E and G? Well it's going to be half of 8.5. So 8.5 over 2 is going to be 4.25. So we're going to try and uh, measure 4.25 as our midpoint here. So 4, 1, 2.5 here. Okay, halfway between point 0.2 and point 0.3. And then similarly, F is going to be up here, H is going to be down here. F and H has to fall halfway between E and G, but also it has to cross halfway between F and H. So what's half of six centimeters? That's going to give us three centimeters. So let's measure, oh, sorry, to make sure it's perpendicular first, let's make sure we're using our, what's it called? Our um, protractor. So we just make sure we've got a point up there so we know that we're lining up correctly. Um, so I want to measure, I want to measure three centimeters here. So let's take the midpoint, line it up with there and measure three centimeters. Is that actually meeting at the midpoint? It's not, I'm slightly offset. Let's try that one again. I was too far this way. Let's, um, make sure we are measuring correctly. Okay, that looks better. Oops. So three down to the middle. Okay, that's a little better. And then again, we're gonna need to, I mean, you can also use your set square here if you've got one of these at home, measuring from the midpoint and then just making sure that, um, you're at 90 degrees, and just going up centimeters, easy peasy. And then, to finish the rhombus, you simply connect all these points. So, go. Well, you don't need to see me connecting all the points, but you just connect them all up. Okay. All right, can we pause a second, teacher, now? Okay, oh. guys, so <laughs> best practice, just um, have a quick check if your lines here are the same length. So just quickly go boom, 
boom. You don't need to write it down, just uh, to check yourself. So I found when I measured mine that I think my point H should have been slightly further over this way. This was a little bit short and this was a little bit long. So, and that was when I was using the set square. So maybe the protractor is better for checking your 90 degree. Anyway, last one. So this trapezium is a bit different to this one in that we only have height, sorry, length and height values. Hmm. So let's whap in our x, uh, sorry, wx just for our starting block. And then we can have a think about how we can go about drawing our trapezium. So let's put wx 9.5 centimeters. So we've got our w and x points. We know that z and y, let me just read the full question, construct a trapezium wx, y, z, such that x and y, uh, w and x equal 9.5 centimeters. Z and Y equal 6.5 centimeters. So X and y, uh, Z and Y doesn't actually meet this line and such that its height is 5.5 centimeters. So first thing we need to remember is that our um, these two lines here are going to be parallel. Okay. Oh, this would have been helpful if I'd made this actually Parallel with the bottom of the page, but it's not. Um, <laughs> so guys, for doing this, we can either, well, one way we can do it is the technique where we take a set square, measure the length of a line we want, and then we can just bring it up and measure a parallel line like that. But, we've got this bit here, as well as a line of symmetry. Okay, so, this shape is going to be symmetrical by the midpoint. So we need to be drawing a shorter line, 6.5, up here somewhere, well, 5.5 away from here. And it actually has to have its midpoint lined up with the midpoint of this. How can we find out where that's going to be? Well, I'm glad you asked. What we can do is if we know this line is 9.5 and we know this one's going to be 6, let's just do a guiding thing of 6 here, then there's going to be a space here that's going to be equal on both sides, which is the difference between the lengths of these lines divided by 2. So let's just quickly do that sum. 9.5 minus 6.5 over 2. Or... 3 over 2, which equals 1.5 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to erase my sketching here. So what I'm going to do, basically, how we can construct this is we can essentially make a rectangle in the middle with a length of 6 that's 1.5 centimeters in, and then we can measure 5 up, 5.5 centimetres up in height and connect it with what will be a 6.5 centimetre line. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure one, whoop, there, here we are. <laughs> 1.5 centimetres in from the edge. Okay, here and here. Is that right? Yes, there we are. Sorry. Slightly wonky. All right. And then if we use our protractor to mark a point 90 degrees from there, we can simply measure the height. So 5.5 degrees, uh, degrees, centimeters up. So like this. 5.5, okay, and then we simply draw a line between those points. Oh, that was a bit thick. This should be actually be a guiding line. We don't want this in the end product, but that's not a big problem. So up here, 
is going to be point, well, uh, W, X, Y, Y, yeah. And then we can just connect points X and Y, and we've got one side sorted. And again, this is just a guiding line, but we can show that that's 5.5 centimeters in height. Whoops. Cool. Now we need to do the same thing on this side here. So we've measured 1.5 centimeters in. Again, we grab our protractors and do, 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 do. oops, shunt it over a little bit. Go up to here. And then we draw a line that's 5.5 centimeters long between those points. Well, going through the second point. 5.5. Hooray! And that's going to be point W, X, Y, Z. <laughs> you can do geometry, but apparently I can't write the letter Z. Then we just connect these points up. Huzzah! Connect these points up. And we're finished. Remember to put in that this is 6.5 centimeters. Hooray! So the height is 5.5 centimeters. The shape is symmetrical. Let's double check that. So we've got the base is 9.5. So what's half of 9.5? Why, that's 4.25. So let's find 4. No, 4.75. No. Brain. Come on. <laughs> yeah, 4.75, sorry. 4.75. Okay, and then let's check. Is that 4.75 centimeters space? So that's, yeah. One, two, three. Yes, perfect. And then let's check. Yeah, lovely. Okay, perfect. So we've got, and let's put in a line of symmetry here. So we've measured halfway th through here. Let's quickly measure halfway. Ah, there we are. Wrong side. Halfway between 6.5. So that would be 3.25. 3.25. And then let's just draw a dotted line of symmetry in there, shall we? Hooray. So now we've got a mostly symmetrical shape. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me, there's a trapezoid, and we didn't need to use these angles because we knew the height and the two lengths and the fact that they were symmetrical. Okay, great. So, for um, classwork, just finish up to this page. You can use my um, work here as a guideline if you'd like, and then next lesson, we will, I'll send you some new material to practice this with. Okay. All right. Thanks very much.